<laughs> well, that's Oso. My name's Walter. Welcome to the Hotline of Diecast. I grab the critter a treat, and uh, I'll we'll be right back. taken care of uh, I think I have this somewhat organized I think and excited to show you guys what I got I probably should say uh, I really hate apologizing for things that are out of my control but I, I've been sick I, I, a couple episodes ago I started catching this cold I definitely caught it I also had to go on the road do some work so the drawing was a little late, but congratulations to you, uh, Lamar and Edward. And, and uh, cool, man. Uh, but I, I, you know, I beg your pardon for sure, and I, I, I wish there wasn't a delay. But that's hopefully water under the bridge, and we can kind of move on. So moving on, uh, I, 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 I got sick, like I said, but I also had to go up to Whitefish and do some work cool little town up north of Montana and uh, so of course I'm gonna do some hunting on the way and I did about a four-hour drive so from here I, I stopped in Missoula and hit my traditional Walmart's targets kept going went up to Polson the Walmart and uh, then went to Kalispell and hit up essentially the same plus a Dollar Tree I think uh, yeah. It's cool. It's quite quite the little rip up there. So first place I stopped was Walmart. Wasn't much there, so I moved on over to Target. Here's what I found at Target. Well, I don't always wait for everyone, but first I found this just laying on the counter. A red edition Audi RS e-tron GT. Beautiful car. Beautiful car. It's a red edition. I got no qualms opening red editions because I'm not keeping I'm not trying to collect all the red editions what I also found there just laying on the shelf was a Porsche 935 in the race day set that's a grab man I mean like so someone touched it and put it back or put it down maybe they forgot it I don't know I don't know but I was Target that was the haul there I didn't really stop at, no, I stopped at one Walmart on Mullen and saw a homie Thor. But was pretty eager to get to Whitefish because it's new territory. So I want to go see some new stores. And I did. I kept moving, went up to Pulse and stopped there first. It's at the bottom of Flathead Lake. Beautiful town. One of my favorite places to go. It's a sanctuary. And stopped in at a Walmart there. And I'll put all the hunts at the end. Um, you guys can go through the peg hunting, tell me what I missed. But I walked up on the triple dumb bin, and I I have really developed an allergy to dumb bins. But I couldn't help it was in case stuff, so I had to go through it and look, and so I did. One of the first cards I found was the Land Rover Defender 90. What a strong casting from Mattel. Uh, I think this is, 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 you know, they haven't done too many, maybe six or seven of them. Did a premium version too, but it's a Rover. It's pretty bulletproof of a car, you know, and 
still a newer casting for us. So we should enjoy it, get excited. Maybe you're in the other end of the spectrum and you're a JDM head. So here's your CRX, it's the 88. Could have done a little stronger in front tampos, but you can't not do the rear on a CRX, which is cool with the whole full uh, uh, brake light. And the color scheme on this is dope. It's old Denver Nuggets colors. Bang. The glorious Lamborghini Riven Toll. It's also part of the anniversary series, 60 years. This car is just bananas. And if you can see, it's got a black roof with red stripe, and then the hood is red with black stripe. Some attention to detail there. It really separates the car from the normal baggage. Whew. The Bugatti Bolide. Bolide. Stupid fast is what it should be called. This car has 1,825 horsepower and did 311 miles an hour. 311 miles an hour. 311 miles an hour. Things are different after 100 miles an hour. Been there, done that a couple times, a few times, you know? Hopefully, I have, so just be quiet. Uh, but after 200, that's like a whole, it's a whole different. That's, that's 200 miles an hour plus. After 300, it must just be a whole different realm. I can't even imagine what it really is, you know, what it, I want to imagine, but I can't imagine what it feels like, so. I mean, in, in a car, like what can, well, I, I guess you can't turn, so you're gonna be going straight. Wow, just, just unfathomable. Anyway, pardon me, back to Hot Wheels. The Hot Wheels Bugatti Bolide, Bolide. And this car is rad because they, they just like threw this out at us at, uh, at the Goodwood, not Goodwood, excuse me, um, which is a rad festival, anyway, um, at uh, Le Mans, that's where it was, 24 hour Le Mans. They unveiled this car for us, and 24 hour Le Mans, you can, you can watch the summary, you know, and I suggest you do, but epic, historical, rad premised race, just there, it was really designed to sell cars, you know, like, our cars can run for 24 hours at speeds. Dependability is there, obviously. You guys buy on Monday. So that's really where, like, those, pardon me, win on Sunday, sell on Monday really come from. And lastly, picked up, uh, not lastly, I picked up this Toyota Tacoma, the 20. And this is a great truck, A, for a number of reasons. It's well finished. You can see the front end. And maybe you guys saw it on the track already if I did that correctly. And the rear end's all completely done. One, two, two, three. There's only been three colorways of this so far. And if you guys weren't aware, uh, there, there is a, uh, yeah, there's three colorways. So the blue, the red, and then, okay, yeah. Um, but what you may not know is there was a variation to the first one, the blue one. And that thing was going for like 25 bucks and stuff online when it first came out. Uh, not just a variation, but both. And in fact, pulled one aside. Here's the blue one. It was a new for uh, 22 model. But uh, it was a wheel variation. So you can see on, on the white one, these are what you call Baja 5s. And a little later on, and with a different base code too. So it's kind of a location thing. Uh, but you got, I think it was OBR fives maybe. Like just kind of an off-road filled in disc wheel. I should find a picture. But that was the variation. I wonder if they're gonna continue that variation with the white. So if so, be sure to look at the wheels and try to get both of them. A little off pill. I also found a sea case treasure hunt. And like I say, I have an allergy to these dumb bins, so I kind of found the cars I wanted and stopped digging. Now I'm wondering if there was a Camaro in there somewhere, but I don't know. But I am really hyped on the Toyotas. Like I grabbed a couple of those just in case you guys need them, but maybe you don't need them because you're going to put yourself in the drawing for the Toyota box. And I got some cool Toyota stuff. Uh, obviously, the original and a new colorway white 
I've also got an FNF Land Cruiser. I've got the most recent Matchbox Forerunner color. And it, you know what? I I really like the element of surprise thing. You know, I really do. I'm just gonna. There's there's definitely three more things that are in the box and. That's all I can say for now. Cool. Uh, but I will give you guys details about the drawing here in a second or later. But it'll be Toyota oriented. So for your JDM folks and or a Toyota off-roading TRD folks, maybe you're in the cruiser club. Man, oh man, oh man. A lot of Toyotas. But that was, uh, that's what I kind of got at Walmart. Then you move on down to premiums. Actually, really, I started at premiums. I'm glad I did because I was there to get an old Boulevard pickup. The 60, 96, excuse me, uh, Chevy Impala, the Super Sport. Slept on casting, not too many of these made, and for them to make a premium option was a grand old gesture from Mattel and Hot Wheels. And I appreciate you guys for this. So thank you, Mattel, Hot Wheels. Start, I found that because I saw this lane on the shelf. Again, someone picked up this, touched it, put it down, and then didn't leave with it. I left with it. I did also grab the T1 and left the other two behind, which would be the Ford Escort and or the uh, Mazda Miata, if you guys didn't know. So this is what I grabbed at Walmart. You know, you're there in the premiums, you're digging through, man. You're like, ah, and you pan down left. And you catch that restock on an old series of haulers. So this is the old series. This came with the, uh, what, the Plymouth? Yep, the Plymouth and maybe, what, the Shell, the Porsche, yep. 962, so. For them to do this reissue is kind of funny, and I'm, I was there and happy to grab it. You know, it's an amazing skyline to have in your collection. It's Liberty Walk, you know, A, then B, it's Skyline, it's the R34. And I was there in time to get two. So I'm really excited about that. So if you guys maybe need one of these, if one in the Fleet Flyer in your collection, please shoot me a DM. Okay, that's, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And that was that, so I kept on trucking, I got all the way up to Whitefish, and uh, did what I had to do, and limped my butt back home. I think I, yeah, I stopped on the way back. I didn't find anything. I did stop in Missoula. Yeah, I stopped in Missoula on the way back. And it's funny because it's where I saw my friend Thor and he was all bummy, you know. I was like, what's up, man? He was like, dude, I've been here like every day, you know, looking for this race day chase. Been here every day. I've seen three people holding it when I got here. So, dude, that's when it hurts. And when when you get there that much later than, than, than acquiring the chase, you know? So, that hurts. I've seen that with the, I had the Lamborghini mirror that happened to me in the same store, actually. So, uh, so I was like, hey man, if I've, I'm, go I'm going up north, if, if I see anything, I'll grab it for you. You know, and if I see two, I'll grab it for you. Didn't see anything. Came back to that store. And I pulled the race day chase. Thor, my G, you know how the ball bounces. I've seen your collection. You you poop on a lot of people's collections that I've seen, you know, and in regard to what you've got in yours, not that you're pooping on people's collections. So anyway. You've got a lot of really cool cars, so I can't feel bad about this, but I do wish I would have found two. You've done me a solid. I'd love to do you a solid. So the hunt continues, but but man, it probably sucks to tell you that I found that at the store that you're talking about. <laughs> so I'm glad you weren't in the store when I was there. Uh, even more so because he also collected him too. And I pulled this in the same hunt. And this is my first of the M2 chases with uh, 
with the uh, lifts. And it's the right one, the GTR. Oh. Good rip. Very, very stoked on that. And what's cool is, you know, with M2, they number the chases. So that's 750 out of uh, 750 chases and then 7,250 main line versions. So 8,000 cars total. So you already know how many are out there total. And I have 750 chases. M2 is a smaller brand. They're more nationwide distributed and focused a lot more at Walmart than other places. Uh, you can find them obviously in like O'Reilly's has their own exclusives and so on and so forth. Um, but mostly Walmart. So the way I'm looking at it is 750 chases, there's 50 states, seven chases a state. Here in Montana, they've got like probably 10, nine or 10 Walmarts in the whole state. So seven, no, pardon me. Six of those chases are possibly in our Walmart. So if you're in Montana, get to Walmart, go find those other six. But it's cool. It's cool to also know that there's only 750 of them. Supers we don't know. and and. We, they'll probably never number supers because they can't control the theft in the factory warehouses. You know, you could have got unspun dots in five, ten supers months ago. You know, and that's unfortunate because that is that is the dark side to the hobby. But there's any anything that's worth something. That is the uh, that's the residual carryover from it. You know, is it has to have that alternative market like that, but. Anyway, moving on. So I, you know, trucking home, get home. I've been, <laughs> I get home and whenever you get home, you know, from a long trip and you're sick, there's always something else you got to do. So I get home and there's some shit I got to take care of. And literally also some shit I got to take care of because I have this family in my yard and eating my apples and man, see the bull. He's such a big, big fella, and he is distinguished. He's an old bull. And see him, the cow and the cat, very rare. So, uh, yeah, they just kind of broke some stuff, trampled some stuff, rather. So, so I went to Ace. Welcome back, Ace. And uh, I'm glad I did, actually, because I went to Ace, and they just got to restock. If you guys don't know, Ace Hardware does sell Hot Wheels, at least ours do. So you may want to go there. You might find yourself some, what was this, probably M case, I think. But the Alfa Romeo, the GTV6, and, and that's a new casting, as well as it's an Alfa. If you're into cars, you gotta be an Alfa. You gotta respect them at least. Because you probably respect the Mustang. Muscle cars. Shout out to you, Mustang Hunter. I've been communicating with him a little more of recent, so. Now I'm accidentally by Mustangs. Plus the Falcon livery is really tight. I also stumbled across the treasure hunt. The time shifter. And this is a cool one. I love how obvious it is with the treasure hunt across the back. But it's a cool casting to uh, have as a treasure hunt. Really stoked on that. Really stoked on that. You can buy Hot Wheels everywhere. And... And I want, it just made me think like, uh, I just said collectors and, you know, if you're, if you're a car person, you should be in alphas and it's probably a good time to mention like, Hey, everyone in this hobby aren't actually car people. Some are just collectors who like, you know, they're, they're just some people who, you know, found something they could be a part of, you know, pretty cheap on a dollar. So that's cool. Smart. And welcome to the family, the community, the club. Some people are just like diehard hard diecast fans and they gotta have you know like the like the Zarnox who have have to have one of everything that has a Hot Wheels logo on it branded anything you know that would be a lot <laughs> and you have those people who like only collect chases someone recently asked me about that like dude what's up with that and I'm like well you, they are collectors they collect you know can't fault them for that you know I mean because they want everything in their collection that they buy to be of value and 
Again, we can control that. I guess it's a good segue into the war report. CNN war report. CNN the war report. Welcome to the war report. Value in your Hot Wheels collection. I just recently, a couple videos back, had someone comment and say, "Well, unfortunately, where I I couldn't I couldn't give it the utmost respect because they also." prefaced it by saying, since you take shots at Lamley, it's time someone takes a shot at you. So I'm like, okay, so you're definitely like just shooting at me, you know? And I read on, he said, disagreed with the uh, ideals that I have, and they're just my ideals that these should carry value. They should, they should be worth more. And we as a community have the ability to decide what that value is. And so we should start high. It's just thought of me because these are collectibles and investment as well as the ones I open are toys. So, the person was like, hey, we're in a recession. College tuitions are going to be due again in October. Uh, they're just toys. I, I, in fact, you guys can go back and read the comments. And so, I mean, again, with unfortunately on a half ear because he immediately made himself out to be like a mole for Lamley or just targeting me or just to be make me a target i don't really know how to explain that but I said hey you know thank you for being a subscriber because admitted shared that there were a subscriber as well and um i said well hey well first and foremost you're wrong we're not in a recession we are feeling the effects of inflation 12 percent okay what we're, we're we as a country are trying to do is everything we can do to not be in a recession there are a lot of scares out there. Government shut down. I mean, all these other things. So, uh, yeah, but but you're incorrect about that. So, in college, I mean, yeah, I, I know what that's like. I had to do that too, you know. But it, all in all, to summarize, if I hear you correctly, what you're saying is right now, at this moment in life, you can't afford the hobby. And that's okay. I'm not giving you, a, I'm not digging on you in a financial manner. I'm not trying to insult your financial pride or anything. I've been broke a couple few times. I've had to bypass Hot Wheels because my money needed to go to something else, you know? Hey, that's, that's what it is. Take that break, you know? They're healthy. Everything in moderation, right? Everything. So, so there's that, you know? Uh, and I think that's really what it comes down to. In regard to Lamley, I got no problems with the Lamley dude, you know? And, brings a lot of things to my attention that I wasn't aware of. Unfortunately, one of those things were when he was tossing supers, you know, and I just thought that was really tacky, you know? And so I shared that and I'm not, probably not ever gonna not share my my honest thought with the, in, in regard to any of that stuff. So I shared that and um, whatever, that was water under the bridge. So uh, I, I've got, I've got a guy I'm actually, Sent in a box to, and uh, he and his kid just found their first premium. Okay, not even a super, but a premium in the wild. I don't know how many of you guys can say you have that same story too, but and I know they've been collecting for more than a year because I sent them a box a year ago. You know, uh, so yeah, I thought that was tacky on Lamley's part, but anyway, uh, our diecast need to have a value because I, I'm sure you can agree with me when you hold your collection in value. So let's put a value on it. You know, you can always go down in price. It's easy to go down in price. It's hard to go up. So let's start high. Moving on. Sorry about that. And again, not taking a dig at you, uh, uh, subscriber. Really appreciate you. Hmm. Someone asked me also, like, how do you find so many chases? I go hunt. I'm a hunter. I go hunt. I, I'm kind of blessed, lucky enough to have a job where I do travel, probably more than the regular average Joe that I think I am, you know? And so I, I take that time to hunt. I'll leave a little early, get up a little earlier, stay a little later, whatever it may be. But I'll I'll try to make use of those miles. And um, that's all I can tell you. And it's fun to hunt outside of your backyard, you know? So I invite you guys all to... Uh, but really wanted to share some news with you guys. I don't know if you had a chance to see this. 
This thing is hella cool. It's a BMW Isetta with like a Harley engine in it and they drag race it. But above and beyond that, he also built like an Isetta flatbed. And if you don't know what Isetta is, it's like a little three wheel car that BMW did years and years and years ago to like avoid like basically like road tax in Europe. Because it wasn't a car because it only had three wheels. So sick. So he's a finalist in the Legends Tour. I'd love to see this thing, you know, come to fruition and they make this next year. Uh, but that's that. RLC news though. Looks like they they're they're offering more the the trickle down effect to the first tier of the candy striper. So at the ten thousand mark, which I think they're probably almost halfway there, um, you get both the large scale and the one six four scale, which makes a ton of sense because we we collect Hot Wheels, you know, uh, one six four scale. So for them to not offer it right off the bat seemed really uh, out of like unthought, you know, like they didn't quite think that through. But there we go. How many of you guys got this bad boy? The 69 Dodge Charger. In fact, just go ahead and enjoy it real quick. That was a good, that's a good looking, I'm not a Mopar guy, but that's a good looking car. Good job on you, RLC, Mattel Creations, Mattel, Hot Wheels. Good looking car. Hopefully you guys were some of the lucky ones before it sold out. What? As I was admiring that car and deciding whether or not I needed to ask someone to help me get it or not, I, I got into this, uh, I got into the Hot Wheels page and I invite you guys I'm gonna put it in the link or put the link in the description came across this campaign that Hot Wheels is now getting behind for the kids it's called embrace failure embracing failure first let me say without any political alignments or anything like that but I'm not I'm definitely not a participation dad you know, I think there should be a winner and loser. That way there's a definition in things. So I'm like, man, how what are you guys doing? You know, I'm wondering if this is going to be, you know, something that's going to affect me and, and my, my outlook on Hot Wheels. So I hit click and it's a, it's a commercial. I'm going to let you guys watch it. Here it is. Failure can take us places. Leaving us wondering, will we ever pull this off? But if we're willing to try again and again, failure can take us to some even wilder places. Challenging us to push beyond what we thought was ever possible. To learn from every attempt so that we can loop the unloopable. Leap the unleapable and stick the landing. Taking on the challenge got us here. Imagine how much further we can go. Challenge accepted. It's kind of the clickbait with the title though, Hot Wheels. <clears throat> I want to be mad at you for that. But if you guys watched it, the idea is, you know, I think they could have worded it better that like maybe they're like, try, try, try again, or 
like my mom says, nothing beats a failure but a try. You know, like, and I see what is out there. It's teaching kids to not give up, and that's really cool. Uh, shit. And here's how it's relative to me and why I'm sharing it to you guys. I make the track videos. It's hard. It's really hard. It's like, cars don't do what you want. So it, it's equivalent to like, I have those emotions that I have when I'm skateboarding. I can't land a trick, that frustration. I used to break trick. boards. Stop that pretty quickly, but it's giving me a break board. If you golf, you've done a putter throw. Don't lie. All of it, you know? Um, so there's that, you know, and the car zone land, but you saw the boy, he finally, he landed, he stuck the landing, and that was cool. So I just thought it was cool. It's a good idea, an ideal. I, again, I'm kind of shaming them for the clickbait, but cool to see what else they're doing besides just cars. So good on you, Hot Wheels, I think. Ooh, storm's blowing in. So along with all that, uh, I kept cruising and, and I, I check out a bunch of other sites and I checked out the homies over at Orange Track Diecast and they were sharing some new leaks from 2024 and I think they got these from Grunty Diecast so let's go over the first one though. Sick Toyota Land Cruiser, the Prado, that one's going to be in like a car culture mix. Oh, then there's the uh, BMW, the 320, which is a rare caliber, you know. Um, it's a race car. And that's supposed to come in a two-pack. It's supposed to come with the uh, 3.0, the CSL. They did a gold super. That is so sick. Then you've got the uh, Silvia, the S15 with the Nismo. That's a prototype. Excuse me, so I don't know if they're going to really make it. And then there's a ton more cars. And you guys got to get over to Orange Track Diecast. Click the link. Check it out. So I got the burps. Man, that storm's rolling in. I better finish up. Um, real quick. We all probably buy extra cars to fuel the hobby. Let's be real. You know, maybe you're not a scalper, but reseller. It's part of it. And if you do, then you don't move those cars. Don't rush to return them to the store. And the reason I say that is because if you're return them at Walmart, so on and so forth. And you're also that person who sees your Walmart doesn't restock very often, you don't get updated cases. It's because of the returns. The returns are considered received inventory. So it's going to disrupt, for lack of a better term, the algorithm of receiving Hot Wheels for said store location. Even if it's only eight Hot Wheels you're returning, you know, they, it's, I, it's unreceivable. So what I'm saying is sell them on the secondhand market, you know, sell them for retail if that's the case, you know, I mean, just get your money back and, you know, it's going to give your store a lot, lot more opportunities to get some updated stuff, you to get some new cars, um, and so on and so forth and, or maybe just make some better decisions about which cars we buy overage of. I know what it's like. I got some extra cars. I've still got extra cars up. It is what it is. Um, but I want to share that with you guys because that's a that's a real deal and I've I've seen it affect other stores and while I'm on the road I really see it. So in closing, I don't know what you guys are doing Sunday, October first. Sounds like I'm going to be in a conversation with another group of diecast collectors over at die, the diecast uh, channel. Um, I'm going to put it in the link and and. I don't really know what it'll be about, but I do know that they have before they shared out what's his name, Anthony Schmidt, maybe Anthony, is it Anthony? This kid, he's, oh yeah, he's autistic. And one of his gifts is the eye to, uh, make die casts look like they're in the real life situation and you guys just have to check out the channel and see but i'm going to put the channel in the link and if you're not busy on sunday um click the notification and then you'll also know what it's all about because i know but but i appreciate you guys if you do tune in 
I also appreciate everyone who donates to the channel. Um, every, all my channel members. It's cool because there was a donation person and a channel member who won the double drawing. I'm sending out best of luck to anyone who's going to enter this Toyota box giveaway. And maybe I'll share everything that's going in with it. But I kind of like the art of surprise. I do like it. Uh, maybe you guys don't. So I'll have to sleep on it. But, uh, you know, maybe you just can participate by hitting a like button. You know, subscribing to the channel if you like what you hear. If, you, if you're going to do that, hit the notifications bell. And if you dare to, you can get a seat at the table. You can buy your way in by being a channel member. Doesn't cost you much. And it also always gets you, you're always uh, one ticket into the drawing. So, um, good luck to you guys. Trees are bending. I'm going to make a pizza. Holla at your boy. Peace.